Homecoming is one of the hottest new shows of the year, uh, nominated at the Golden Globes, Critics' Choice Awards, and I'm here with the show's costume designer, Catherine Marie Thomas. I'm Kevin Jacobson, writer at Gold Derby. So, Catherine, what was the overall vision that you had in mind just for the costumes on Homecoming? Yeah, I mean, I, um, me, along with Sam Esmail, who I work with also on Mr. Robot, and uh, Anastasia White, who I also work with on Mr. Robot, and Todd Campbell, the cinematographer. Um, you know, when we were looking at Homecoming and sort of thinking about creating this environment um, that is very much kind of part of the show, you know, I think that the facility and the guys in the facility sort of set up this tone for what is this very sort of eerie um, world that you don't really know what's going on. Um, you know, is it like, is it a camp? Is it like, you know, it's on the surface, it seems like this very welcoming kind of lovely place to come back to. But then you sort of quickly realize that it's not really all that it seems and that, you know, the guys seem to be given some freedoms, but don't really necessarily have them. So in terms of the clothing, what we wanted to accomplish was sort of this very comfortable environment um, where it seemed like they had a choice of sort of what they wore in sort of a parameter, sort of like a university, you'd go to a store, you would get issued, you know, the campus sweatshirt, the, you know, the shorts, um, this kind of branding um, atmosphere. And was there like a particular feeling you wanted the audience to get from the wardrobe for Julia Roberts character in particular, Heidi? Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, if you watch the show, you sort of know that we flip between two kind of time periods and of, of her life, um, one in which she is, pretty successful as a new um, therapist working with the, um, the soldiers that are returning. And then also um, her other life later, which you kind of are sort of pieced together as a waitress, very, both very different feelings um, of the same woman that doesn't, is sort of trying to piece together these places that are, that are wildly different. Um, you know, it was important to me that Heidi felt really welcoming to the soldiers because I think that was how they set up the trust um, and ultimately, you know, which leads to a lot of the tension later on. Um, so, you know, we, we looked at using soft fabrics and just having her feel like a very warm um, human that people could relate to. And uh, I was just curious if Julia herself brought any ideas to the table as far as just how she thought her character should present herself to the world. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Julia, you know, has has lots of opinions. She's been in the business for a long time. She's very invested in these characters, you know, especially the two Heidi characters. Um, but she and I actually had sort of the same vision. So it was actually a very easy collaboration. Um, you know, the, it was really important to have these sort of softer fabrics and things that felt kind of feminine, but not, um, you know, overtly feminine. We were very careful about that. Um, you know, and then I have to say, like, Julia was really willing to kind of go down the the sad <laughs> the sad hole you know for Heidi um later and you know that sort of fearlessness that she has to play that character I think was really nice because it allowed us to really let Heidi you know feel like she had kind of lost everything yeah yeah um well part of the show is indeed flashing forward four years to 2022 yeah. where Heidi has lost her memory of even working at homecoming so I was just curious if there were notable choices you made just in her wardrobe or anyone else like Shea Wingham's character even to just like reflect any sort of future clothing trends or just deliberately kind of try to keep it the same as 2018 I mean we 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 used um color was was one of our tools that we use to tell the two time changes it was really important we didn't want to do anything like weird and sort of tricky with the you know futuristic stuff because I think it would have just felt you know I, I don't we, we just didn't need it I think you you could feel the time shift without it um you know we all production design camera us we all were very careful about our color there was you know we used no um blue in um in the past so blue only came back you know as she weirdly as she was you know in her waitress Heidi in that time period so it was really more through tone and and color that we that we showed the differences and like what about dressing Stefan James's character Walter were there any yeah. challenges in terms of figuring out how to work with just a more casual wardrobe for him but also kind of make him like a attractive person for yeah. Heidi yeah I mean you know 
Steph- Stefan doesn't need any help. He's just fine. <laughs> you can put, I mean, as you can see, you can put him in a t-shirt and a pair of sweatpants and he, you know, he, Stefan is just so talented and so handsome and so genuine. And I think it shows, you know, in, in, in his character, you know, um, it, you know, really it was just being able to have sort of a uniform that we could have enough differences in that all of the guys could show a little bit of their personality, you know, which is what it's, it's more challenging than you think, but um, I think we accomplished it. You know, we tried to. Yeah. And homecoming, it's a contemporary series and it can sometimes I think be hard for the average audience member or even like professional critics even to take notice of especially excellent work because it's not necessarily like the poofy dresses or anything too extravagant. So do you find that there are any like misconceptions about how challenging your job can be compared to those doing like period or fantasy costumes? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think you kind of said it. I mean, there are misconceptions that, you know, putting someone in, you know, jeans and a, or t-shirt and sweatpants can be is sort of simplistic. But, you know, sometimes the more simplistic, the harder it is because it's finding that perfect combination. I mean, we, you know, I, we tested a whole bunch of colors and, you know, things and I ended up throwing out a lot of stuff in like, you know, two days before we started shooting and, you know, because it's a big commitment and if you don't get it right, you're stuck with it. And, you know, I mean, I, you know, it was, it was uh, originally they were going to be, t- everything was going to be tan and I tested it and I didn't like it. And, you know, I said to Sam, I was like, I just, I don't think we're going to be happy. And I think we have to change it. So, you know, you do, you do come up with those kind of challenges sometimes and you have to either figure it out or you're, you know, or you're stuck with it. Um, but, you know, there's so many great shows on now and the, the you know, there's all my, my fellow designers are doing great work. It's just a really crowded, um, you know, field of great work. So it's pretty exciting, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, one thing I noticed is the final scene, the very final scene of the season where Heidi is visiting Walter at a diner. You know, for most of the series, Heidi is wearing a lot of like these cooler and muted colors. And here she's wearing like a white plaid shirt that looks kind of brighter than most of what she's worn in uh, any previous episode. So I was just wondering if that was an intentional choice to sort of suggest her getting out of her little haze and more of an openness to life on her part. Yeah, I mean, I think it was it was a very intentional, you know, decision and Stefan and, you know, they're out in the woods and it's this very they're up in the mountains and there's sort of this liberating freedom that both of them have. And, you know, this they're reconnecting, you know, sort of by chance. It wasn't really, you know, so yeah, there's this sort of hopefulness, I think, for, for both of them that you're left with. Um, at least that's how we saw it. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so Homecoming, as you said, is also a Sam Esmail show, who is the mind behind Mr. Robot. And you also do the costumes on that show. So I just, is there anything special about working with him in particular that's different from other projects you've worked on? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, my, the team, the Mr. Robot team, you know, like I said, we were all together um, on Homecoming in in LA and, you know, Sam is really a brilliant visionary and he's great. He's a great person to, um, to collaborate with. Um, He can be very specific, but then he also allows us to bring a lot of things to the table, which I think is just a really amazing combination of, of values and, you know, Mr. Robot's a really hard show and we've been together for four years and we're finishing our fourth year right now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, he's, you know, you know, and it's amazing how many hats he can wear because he can, he's, you know, the producer, the writer, the director on robot and, you know, and at homecoming, he was, he directed, we directed all the episodes and, you know, it's cross boarding that many episodes is not without its challenges as well, you know, for director and actors and, mm-hmm. and crew. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I wanted to get to some of your award success in the past because you were nominated at the Emmys about 10 years ago for your yep. work on Grey Gardens. Yep. So first of all, could you just talk about your experience working on that with Drew Barrymore and Jessica yeah. Lange and also what your experiences was like just getting nominated for your first Emmy? Yeah, it was pretty overwhelming. I mean, that 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 show was a really a labor of love for everybody that was involved in it. It was really scary for, you know, for Drew, it was scary for me because, you know, whenever, whenever you take on icons and sort of, you know, put them on screen and 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 rework what people like visions of it are because they were very specific. Um, you know, Little Edie was such a fashion icon that, you know, it was a little scary. We all had to kind of go, all right, you know what, we're just going to do the best that we can do, <laughs> be true to the story, be true to the characters, 
you know, and, and ultimately like, of course, not everyone's ever going to be happy all the time, but you know, I think what we came up with there was, was pretty, was pretty special. And, you know, so it meant a lot to be honored that way, you know, and I know Drew felt that way. And Michael Susie, the director was, you know, amazing to work with. Um, but it was, yeah, it's pretty terrifying when you, you know, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'd like to say we all come, all come so easy, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty great. I feel like little Edie was kind of her own costume designer. One hundred percent. I mean, it was like sometimes you really have to, <laughs> you really have to sort of like go down the the road of insanity and sort of put your you know your head where where that <laughs> character is, which is you know kind of terrifying. Yeah. Uh, well, you also won an award from the Costume Designers Guild for your work on Grey Gardens, and you'd also been nominated for Kill Bill Volume One and Two previously. Yeah. So, do you have any fond memories just from that of getting that on an award from your own guild. Yeah. I mean, Kill Bill was really special because I was, you know, it was the first, um, the first awards that I was nominated for and I was young and, you know, I think it was, um, Quentin is always, you know, one to surround himself with really interesting creative people, whether they're seasoned veterans or, you know, newbies that are, you know, just cutting their teeth. And so, yeah, for me, that was a really, that was a really special one and it was a really hard job. And I, you know, I definitely learned a lot and um, yeah, it's just an honor. And what a great movie to still be such a, so kind of relevant. People still talk about it and still, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've designed the costumes for a lot of great actresses over the years, like Julia Roberts, Naomi Watts, Reese Witherspoon, Sandra Bullock, Melissa yeah. McCarthy, Drew Barrymore, Jessica Lange, Jodie Foster, Uma Thurman, like the list goes on and on. Yeah. So like, is there just one costume in particular over the years that has just always stood out to you as one you're most proud of? I mean, you know, I have to say like Uma's yellow tracksuit and in, in Kill Bill is probably one of my favorites just because it's so so much part of the of the, the film and the iconography of that and you know and working with uma back then was just such a great like she she was just a, a, a like an amazing supporter of mine and you know i wouldn't have been there if it hadn't been for her so you know that has a very special place in my heart i mean also you know i had a great gardens is definitely up there there were a lot of costumes in there that i that i loved but you know definitely transforming jessica and drew was um one of those things that you don't you know, it's, it's a, sometimes a once in a lifetime kind of opportunity. Yeah. I happen to love uh, Melissa McCarthy, what she wears in the heat. Oh, well, <laughs> I must that's say my other, like, that's definitely, that was one of the funniest movies to her. I mean, Melissa yeah. is so fun to work with because she just like, she just, she cares so much, but she also just lets you just go, you know, with it. Yeah. So that, that, but, and Sandy was great in that too. Like it was, it's a really fun, it was a really fun movie to work on. Mm-hmm. Um, so as we wrap up, I mentioned earlier how you do the costumes on Mr. Robot, and that show is indeed coming back for its final season this year. Yeah. So I believe it's the longest running TV series you've worked on. And yeah. so yeah. how do you, just how do you feel kind of about the show wrapping up now in terms of just your experience working there over the years? Um, it's bittersweet. I mean, it's a, I'm not going to lie. It is really, really one of the hardest shows to do. We cross board all 10 episodes. It's or 12 this season. Um, you know, we have over 700 characters. It's, it's a lot. And in the last season, it's like pedal to the metal, like every kind of, you know, Sam is, you know, he, he wants to end it in the best way. So, you know, we're, yeah, it's bittersweet. It's, it's, it's going to be, we're excited though. The story's great. The story's amazing. So, and Ra and working with Rami this year, I mean, like he, you know, we've had him the whole time and now we've, we have Rami the you know the Oscar winner <laughs> Oscar winner Rami Malek <laughs> you know, yeah <laughs> just that little award so you know but he's been he's the same Rami that he was you know since the first season and you know we're all just so proud of him and I think we hope that that brings awareness more awareness to the show and that people that haven't seen it can see it because it's such a great it's so well written that you know I hope that more people get a chance to uh to catch up on it yeah, love it. Yeah. And uh, before you go, I just I know Homecoming is coming back for a second season, I believe. So do you know anything about just how that's coming along at this point? I don't. I know nothing um, other than that, you know, I, I believe Stefan's coming back. I don't really know. I actually don't even know who is actually directing. I know Sam's not directing it, um, but we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure I'm it'll be interesting. For yeah, for sure. 
Well, thank you so much, Catherine, for talking to us today and best of luck at the Emmys. Thank you so much. And for everyone else, please hit subscribe for more award season interviews and head to goldderby.com to make some predictions of your own.